All righty, what's happening, my U World friends? Peter Linto with you. We are recording level one. You can actually post this for level two as well, same content. So, level one or level two, but it's how to calculate forward rates. This is going to fill in the live webinar the other day. These last two questions got cut off, so I'm going to record them here. But if you want to use it for marketing, level one and or level two, you could certainly do it. So away we go. What's happening, folks? Peter Linto back with you. We had a request. Hey, could you help us out with forward rates? We sure can, but we're going to need grandma. That's right. Get your grandma. She's going to help us solve for forward rates. You are now going to be the resident expert in your study group on how to calculate forward rates, okay? Pretty simple. Once you see it, once you're in good shape and it's two for one because when you in derivatives have to calculate the price, the fixed rate of a forward rate agreement, you're going to use this exact same logic. So here we go. You never start with the rates. You don't know what to do with all the facts. You start with the question stem. Hey, can you tell me the nine-year forward rate after four years? So what do we think the nine-year rate's going to be, the nine-year rate, four years from now? So what will the nine-year rate be four years from now? Step number one, add it together. 13 years is your total time horizon. So that's step number one. We want the nine-year rate, albeit four years from now. 13 years is our total time horizon. Next step, you got to find me the 13-year spot rate. That's the appropriate discount rate for a single cash flow coming 13 years from now. What is the 13-year spot rate? 6.25%. Excellent. Then you find for me, hey, what's the four-year spot rate? The four-year spot rate? 6.4%. Beautiful. And now you talk to grandma. You say, hey, grandma. How would you like to lock up your money for 13 years and you can earn 6.25% per year for the next 13 years? She goes, well, how much is that going to get me? Well, Grandma, the way you solve for that is we're going to take 1 plus 0.0625 expressed as a decimal. She goes, well, why 1 plus? Because you want your principal back too, right? So principal plus interest, and you're going to get that each and every year for the next 13 years. That'll be your cumulative holding period return for that 13-year time horizon. Beautiful. Grandma says, ah, 13 years, long time to lock up my money. I might be dead by then. Hey, four years from now, I'm going to take a nice cruise. Hey, I only want to lock up my money for four years. What can you do for me? All right, so Grandma, you want to be more liquid? We could get you 6.4% principal plus interest, and you could lock that in for the next four years. She goes, okay, what if I decide not to take the cruise, though, and I want to lock up my money for 13 years? What do I do four years from now? Grandma, no worries. You're going to roll your money over and you're going to earn the nine-year rate, albeit four years from now. So add the nine and the four. Make sure we have the same total time horizon on either side of the question. We do either side of the equation and we do 13-year time horizon. So we're going to back into infer what the nine-year rate should be four years from now, given today's spot rates. Now you just got to do a little algebra. All right, let's go back to like the, you know, eighth grade, ninth grade, whenever you did it. Some of us did it in college. So here we go. Divide both sides by 1.064 raised to four. 1.064 raised to four. So take 1.0625 raised to 13. Be careful with your entries. Divided by 1.064 raised to four, you're going to get It works out to be, ready, 1.71597, that's 1 plus R raised to 9. Now, 1 plus uh, uh, 71.597%, that's your cumulative return over a 9-year time horizon. So what we want to do is calculate the geometric mean, the average annualized yield each and every year for the next five year, uh, excuse me, nine years. So we take 1.71597, raise it to one over nine, subtract one. So folks, you will get, let's see, that works out to be 0.0618. So 6.18%, that's what we think, given today's spot rates, that's what we think the nine-year rate should be four years from now. It's your break-even rate. So folks, again, this is two for one because in derivatives, that's how you're going to price forward rate agreements, okay? Come up with a fair fixed rate. Now, somebody might say, hey, Pete, I think the nine-year rate four years from now is going to be higher than that. Then you want to be on the right-hand side of the equation. If you say, hey, you know what, Pete, I don't think the nine-year rate um, uh, four years from now is going to be 6.18. I think it's going to be less than that. Then you'd be better off being on the left-hand side of the equation. That's going to help us determine in derivatives whether we want to buy or sell a forward rate agreement. Now, 
What if they asked you to solve for the 13-year spot rate? Well, what you could do is use the right-hand side of the equation. If you're given the four-year spot and you're given the nine-year rate, the nine-year spot rate, 1.0618, well, 1.064 raised to four times 1.0618 raised to nine, that's how we would solve for the left-hand side of the equation. The spot rate is the geometric mean of the forward rate. So let's work it out. 1.064 raised to 4, 1.28, 1, 1641. 1. 1.0618 raised to 9, rounding 1.715475 approximately. Multiply these two values together, you get 2.198623. Two, three. Now, folks, we're solving for the 13-year spot rate. We want that annualized. So what do we have to do? Raise this to 1 over 13, then subtract the principal. All right, so what would be our annualized yield? 2.198623, raise to 1 over 13, subtract 1, I get 6.2476, approximately 6.25%. All right, so now either side of the equation you have no problem solving for. They ask for the 13-year spot. Find me some combination on the right-hand side of the equation where the total time horizon will be 13. Multiply it all out. Find your geometric mean, and therein lies your spot rate. Or if you're given the 13-year spot, you're given the 4-year spot, well, can we solve for what we think the 9-year rate will be 4 years from now? Let's try another one. All right, our second question, illustrating how to calculate forward rates. You ready? With this question, they want to know, hey, what's the two-year rate one year from now? All right, so I start with my question stem, not the rate. What will the two-year rate be? What will two-year rate be, albeit one year from now? That forward rate, it's an expected rate, what we think given today's spot rate. So step number one, add it together. What's our total time horizon? Three year is our total time. Now, this question's a little bit different because the yields are stated on a semi-annual bond basis. We're going to ignore the semi-annual. Look at how far apart your answer choices are. So you could just work as if it was stated on an annualized basis. And I'll show you two reasons. Reason number one, you're going to move much faster. Reason number two is that not only are you going to move much faster, there's danger if you do it on a semi-annual basis. So I'll show you that in a second. But let's solve for this. You ready? What is the three-year spot rate? 2.058%. 2.058%. What is the one-year spot rate? 1.872. So again, Grandma, where are you? Come on back. We need you once again. Hey, Grandma, how would you like to lock up your money for three years? And I could get you 2.058% per year. She says, wow, that sounds great. Principal plus interest expressed as a decimal raised to three. She says, you know what, though? I want to be more liquid. A year from now, my friend's going to pass the CFA, and I want to buy them a nice gift. So I want to be more liquid just in case they take you world and, and crank on the exam and pass. No problem. So, Grandma, I could lock you in, get you 1.872% for that one-year time horizon. She says, well, what if they don't take you world? They fail the exam. I, what do I do with my money? I have a total time horizon for three years. Well, no worries, Grandma. Roll your money over and earn the two-year rate, albeit one year from now. What's our total time horizon on either side of the equation? Three. Now all we do is solve for X. Divide both sides by 1.0872 raised to one. We are now solving for what we think the two-year rate's going to be one year from now. When you solve for that fraction, you get 1.043485. Now, that's not your answer. 4.34%, this is principal and interest. That's your cumulative return, cumulative return over that two-year time horizon. So we got to find our geometric mean. Let's raise it to 1 over 2 and subtract one. What would be our annualized rate of return? Your annualized rate of return would be 0 0.021511 or 2.151%. Correct answer, choice C. That's solving this problem, ignoring the fact they said, hey, it's semi-annual basis. Now I'll redo the question and show you how close your answer cho choices are, but look at how much longer it takes, a little bit longer to do it on a semi-annual basis if we adhere to that. So again, what will 
The two-year rate B, one year from now. So we set it up the exact same way. The difference is everything now we're going to have to convert to periodic. So watch this. The three-year spot, 0 0.02058 divided by 2. Because that 0 0.02058, we want to convert to a semi-annual, a periodic basis. So if you take 0 0.02058 divided by 2, you get 0 0.01029. What's my one-year spot again? 0 0.01872, divide that by 2. What's my semi-annual rate? 0 0.00936. That's my periodic rates. Now we got to convert the time horizon from years to periods. So one year times semi-annual basis, two, that's two periods, three years times compounding twice a year, that's six periods. So now all we have to do is adjust. Grandma, you're going to lock up your money and we're going to get you principal and interest, but now we're going to get you that for three years, but six periods. Okay, semi-annual convention. Grandma says, hey, I want to be more liquid. Okay, Grandma, I'll get you a periodic rate of 1.00. 936 for two periods. She goes, well, what do I do after that? Well, then you'll roll your money over and you'll earn the two-year rate, albeit one year from now, two periods from now. So your total time horizon on either side of the equation is six periods. What will the two-year rate be one year from now is the same thing as what will the four period rate be two periods from now, just expressing it on a periodic basis. I like to put a little subscript P in there to remind me this is periodic. I'm gonna have to annualize my answer and this is the danger when you do it semi-annual basis. But let's solve for X now. Divide both sides by 1.00936 raised to two. 1.00936 raised to two. I get that to be 1.04372. 1.04372. Now, folks, what did we just solve for? The two-year rate, one year from now, or the four-period rate, two periods from now. So, folks, R subscript P, that's your periodic rate. We want to now solve for the geometric mean. I want that periodic rate, but I want to take the 1.04372 raise it to one over four periods, here's my semi-annual, here's my periodic, my semi-annual rate. That works out to be 0 0.01, 0, 0755. B will be the most common wrong answer choice. They don't want the answer expressed as a semi-annual or periodic rate. They want the rate annualized. So then you got to remember to take the periodic rate semi-annual, multiply it by two to annualize it, you get 0 0.021510. Take a look at the difference in your answer. 0 0.021511 versus 0 0.02510. It makes no difference. So you just learned a very valuable lesson. If they tell you it's on a semi-annual basis, ignore it. Unless your answer, unless you had two choices, one was 2.1511 and the other one was 2.1510, then you better adhere to the semi-annual convention. But you really don't even have to. You could do an annualized, but the more periods, the lower the yield, it would be the lower rate, the 0 0.021510, as opposed to the higher rate. More you compound it, your uh, yield would be lower. So moral to the story is the two-year rate, one year from now, just solve for it on an annualized basis, even though they tell you it's a semi-annual convention, okay? You'll work faster and you will not be sucked in by the second best choice, which will be the periodic rate, which is only a subtotal if you solve for it on a semi-annual basis, okay? All right, not so bad. Good luck studying, folks. I'll see you guys in the next free webinar. We want your business. We won't let you down. Let's go.